Hello and welcome to part four of the little turtle tutorial series here on Blender Cookie. This is David Ward and when last I left you we had used the sculpt tool to go in and add some little details and then we uh, we baked a tangent normal map from those details. So now we're going to actually start uh, working with some textures. So the first thing I want to do is the eyeballs have been kind of, you know, ignored up until now. So I'm going to I'm going to work on the eyeballs, try to get them looking nice and pretty and then we'll uh, work on the texture for the turtle himself. So I'm going to go and grab the turtle and hide him. Let me go ahead and turn on my screencast keys so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, now, okay. So this is right now is just one eyeball with the mirror turned on uh, as we did in part one or two, I don't recall. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and, and kill that mirror. We just want to work with the one eyeball now. And Let's get the uh, actual eyeball set up so that we can start texturing the way uh, the way uh, we would like. So uh, right now we have the, the basically the white of the eyeball and then the lens, and that's pretty much the only thing we have showing. So I want to turn this lens into its own little piece here. So I'm going to select those and tell you what, let's go and select that loop there as well. I'm going to hit Shift D and then Y to drag that out on the Y axis right there just to get it out of the way for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab that loop there again. Shift S. I'm going to do selection or cursor to selected just so it's right there centered up on that. And then I go ahead and select these guys here that were previously the lens. This is now going to be the iris area. So I'm going to S Y negative one and it's going to make it go into the eye rather than out. But that's going a little too far, so let me scale it on the Y axis a little bit smaller. So just hit S and Y to scale on that axis, and then just kind of scale it down just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add a, a seam around the iris there. Control E, go ahead and mark that seam. And then we're going to go ahead and add a seam around where the pupil will be, right there. Actually, don't need that point in the middle. Control E, mark the seam. And I'm going to do this a little bit different than you might have seen before um, as far as uh, unwrapping the UV coordinates for this eyeball. Um, this little technique I played with that came out pretty well. I'm going to use some procedural textures uh, for the uh, for the iris to make it look nice and uh, fairly realistic with the you know the uh, noisiness of your of your iris. Uh, but we'll use procedural textures for that and bake it to a final texture. So the way we're going to do that is just go ahead and take the iris. Now instead of it having it being a circle, we're going to go ahead and and uh, put a seam right there to where it'll be basically a long tr uh, rectangle once we get it unwrapped. Um, okay, and then uh, just for ease of access here, we'll just go ahead and take the the edge here on the the white of the eyeball all the way up to there. Go ahead and mark that as, as a seam as well. Okay, and now uh, we're pretty well ready to tell you what, let me grab the pupil here and we'll just move that in just so it has a little bit more indentation, maybe add a loop. Actually, you can't add a loop right there because it's uh, all triangles, but uh, what we can do is actually just grab our vertex select tool and hold down alt and right click on that loop there, then shift select the point in the middle, and then we can select the edge select and then right click on that edge again. Now we have all of these edges inside here selected. Now we just hit W subdivide and it'll add a loop right there. Then we can select that one, control E and edge slide and just go ahead and slide that up to where I have a nice sharper transition right there at the uh, the pupil. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back in edit mode and uh, grab the lens here and just go ahead and move that back into place where it's kind of just flush on the eyeball itself and maybe grab that loop inside there and scale. Oops, wrong one. Grab the right one. There we go. Scale that up so it's a more gradual transition there. Okay, so now we have our eyeball pretty well ready to unwrap. So let's come over here in this window, so make that a little bit bigger, and go ahead and kill that texture out there and we'll go ahead and create a new one. And since it's such a small image or small piece of the model, I'm going to go ahead and leave it 1024 by 1024. And uh, I guess we can go ahead and go uh, color grid like we did before, but it's not real important because we're not going to actually be using this particular image. I guess we'll bake to it later, but anyways, it doesn't really matter what you use because in the end it'll have something different on there. But anyways, we'll go ahead and use that. And let's go ahead and name this eyeball 
texture map. Okay. And then I'll come over here, tab and edit mode, select everything, U, unwrap. And then we'll come over here and kind of do like we did on the others. Average the scale. Seems to be in pretty good shape already. Pack the islands, also in pretty good shape. So, like I was saying, this part here is going to be the iris. So, I want this to be more of a, a flat uh, rectangle. So I'm going to have to kind of go in here manually and move these points around. So let's just click in there and just drag these up to where they're kind of in line with each other. Like so. And this will all make sense once I get it. I promise. Okay, so we got those all there. Select those. I know they're not straight now, but we'll go ahead and straighten them now. Hit S on your uh, keyboard, and then Y to scale on the Y axis, 0%. So we'll flatten those out like so. And go ahead and scale them down just a little bit so they fit in here a little bit better. Okay, and go ahead and put them there, and then we're going to hit P. And we're going to pin those right where they're at. So we'll straighten them up just a little bit. A little bit more. Uh, evenness between each one. Actually, if you hold down X, it'll only move on the X axis. So G, oops, hit H instead of G. There we go. Just kind of even these out a little. They don't have to be 100% perfect. Move that back up just a little. There we go. Okay, so now, uh, since those are pinned, if I come over here and I hit U, unwrap again, It'll uh, kind of make the others kind of shaped accordingly to kind of match that straight line now. So we can grab the bottom now. We don't have to move it up individually like we did the top. So we can just scale that on the y-axis, 0%. Then maybe scale it on the x-axis a little bit just so it fits a little bit better with the top. A little bit bigger. And we'll go ahead and pin those as well and run the unwrap one more time. And then all of the points in between are a little more even. So now... If I grab these, let's make them a little taller. Scale them like so. Okay, so now we're ready to start working with the procedural textures over here. Now, uh, there's a couple of things I want to do before we jump into that, and that's to create a few materials to uh, kind of separate all the different colors here on the eyeball that we will eventually merge all together in our final baked map. So I'm going to create one, and we're going to call this one Eye White. Okay, just leave it white. Actually, it's kind of a gray color when you the default, so we'll just run that all the way up to white. And then we'll add one more, and we'll call this one pupil. Okay, and this one's going to be black, all the way to black. Intensity all the way. It doesn't really matter. It's all black. So, um, And then finally, one more, and we'll call this one iris. Okay, now on the iris, we're going to jump over here to the textures and add a new one. And we're going to leave it on clouds. But we're going to come down here to the colors and go and expand that and turn on ramp and then click. The first one selected right here is this one all the way to the left, which is black, but it's 100% alpha, 100% transparent. So let's click on that guy, set the alpha all the way up to one. And then since it's a green turtle, let's give him, let's give him kind of a amberish brown eyes. So we'll run the color up here and maybe bring it down to about right there, maybe a little more bright. And then grab the white over here. Turn this to more of a yellowish tone, and then maybe add one color in here just to give it some variation. Maybe darken it up just a bit. And yeah, maybe brighten this one. Okay, so now um, let's go to the preview here. Go to both, so we can kind of see what we're doing here. And excuse me, let's go ahead and collapse the colors. We got that pretty well set up the way we want. But under the, the uh, basis, I want to change this to, I think the best one I found was Veronoi F1. And I want to change that to hard. And it looks like maybe it was F2. Yeah, F2, I think. Now, um, it's looking okay, but I'd like to make it look a little more uniform, iris-y, if that's a word. Uh, so let's change the depth up just a bit. I'm going to collapse the cloud setting there. But under mapping now, uh, let's increase the X here so you can see it's getting skinnier in here and the colors are a little off so let's let's set the X to say 10 and then we'll come up here and adjust the colors again just so we get a little bit better change there 
Okay, maybe 10 is too much. Let's set that to, uh, let's just make it 5. There we go. Okay, so that'll be the color of our eyes. If you want to use a different color, just change these colors here. So maybe you want to go uh, blue or something, just change that to that. And then maybe a darker shade there. And maybe more of a greenish tone here. Kind of have some bluish eyes. Yeah, you know what? I think I like the blue better, so let's go with that. And then also the clouds. Let's change the, the size a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and collapse that. And instead of the coordinates being generated, we're going to say UV. And it's going to take these mapped out coordinates and kind of spread them, flatten them across here. And since we have the iris as a rectangle here, it's going to take uh, the flatness there and it's going to kind of spin it around the, uh, the middle of the circular motion, uh, <laughs> circular shape of the actual 3D iris. But since we spread it out here, you know, it'll be fine over here, but then it'll wrap it around here. Okay, now uh, we need to tell the eyeball uh, which parts need to have all these different materials. So we'll tab into edit mode, grab our, uh, our face select, okay? Let's go to our side view. And since we have these, the, uh, the seams on here, we don't have to select all of the ones we want like so. We can just select one face. As long as we're, as long as we're inside the seams there, that's all we need to do. We can go control L and it'll select everything inside that particular section of seam. So now we'll say eye white, go ahead and assign that. And then I guess we need one more. You know, that's not important right now. I was gonna go ahead and add one more material for the lens, but uh, we'll worry about that after we get the material baked. So for now, let's select a piece of the lens, control L, and just hide that just to get it out of the way right now. And we'll go ahead and select one of these faces from the iris area, control L, go ahead and grab our iris, assign that. And tell you what, let's go ahead and give it uh, a little bit of a bluish tint just so we can see it here in the window. I'll go ahead and select one of the faces from the pupil and go ahead and assign that. So now if we tab out, well, you can't see it because of the the, the fake iris there, but uh, if we look, maybe, there we go. You can kind of see a little bit of what it's going to look like. But since we have all these set up now, um, we can go ahead and go to our render setting, render tab here, go all the way down to bake, and instead of normals this time, we're going to change that to textures. So now when we bake, we should get all that color in uh, the uh, iris, uh, that, I mean the pupil uh, is probably over here in the black area somewhere, so let's select everything. Yeah, it's right there. So we got the black pupil here, the, eye, the white of the eyeball, and then the iris texture right there. And the lens is right here, but that's okay because like I said, we're going to give it a whole other uh, material once we get this texture saved. So let's go ahead and save this, save as image. And we'll call this one uh, texture map eyeball. Okay, go ahead and save that. And now we can come up here over in our materials and just go ahead and get rid of that material, minus that one out. And we can go ahead and get rid of the minus now as well. You know what, I'm gonna, for the sake of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and leave them in. But uh, here on the, uh, I'll leave those all as they are, create a whole new material here and uh, we're going to call this one new, and it's going to be eyeball texture, okay? And then we'll come over here to our texture settings and uh, click on here. It's going to be an image or movie. And then down here, we can just click the little thumbnail since it's already in our Blender scene and say eyeball texture map. And then go and collapse this image mapping, repeat everything. Uh, mapping is going to be UV and just the default UV map right there. And, okay, that should be good to go. Actually, one more thing we can do is set it to be the influence for the color. Obviously, this is what we want. And also the specular levels, the color and intensity. That way, it's not a, a bright white dot on side the, uh, inside the iris on the blue and, 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 and on the pupil. It'll be, the glare will be that color, so it won't be as unrealistic, if you will. Okay, so back to the materials. We'll add one more material here, call this one uh, lens, okay? And this one is going to be 100% transparent, so we need to turn on transparency. And let's go ahead and turn on ray trace, just so it has a little bit of a, well, you know what? I was just thinking we're gonna be moving into cycles later, so. Um, 
we'll convert all that once we get into cycles. So uh, right now, we'll go ahead and set it up for the Blender render internal, the Blender internal render, and then once we get everything all done with the the uh, rest of the turtle textures and everything, then we'll convert everything into cycles. So, um, so for now, we'll set it to ray trace and then alpha all the way down to zero and change the index of refraction, IOR, change that up just a bit. Okay, then we'll come up here to specular, change the type to ward ISO and make the slope a little smaller. And there we go. Okay, so now when we tab into edit mode, unhide the iris or the uh, pupil there, go ahead and select one of the vertices on it, control L, go ahead and assign the lens material to it. And then we'll select one of the ones on the eyeball itself and assign the eyeball texture to it. So now we'll tab out and we have our lights and everything set up. So, oh, one more thing before we render, a little quick test render. Um, since we have this transparent lens on here, um, normally we would be able to see through it uh, accordingly to the, uh, the transparency setting, but it, since it is a part of the mesh, it's gonna throw a shadow. So we need to do a couple of things. We need to come down here and say, uh, oops, under shadow, uh, say, uh, turn off the cast buffer shadows and cast approximate. And then up here on the eyeball texture, we'll come down here and say, receive transparent. So it can receive the light coming through that transparent uh, part of the mesh there. Okay, so now uh, if we grab our camera, kind of zoom in here so we can see it a little bit better. And then see where our light is. Okay, it's right there. Let's move it up a little bit right there. Okay, so now we're going to do a test render real quick. Okay, and it's showing the the turtle himself since he's just hidden. He's still in the scene, but you can see how the uh, that procedural texture that was baked to a image map kind of works pretty well as uh, as an iris texture. So there we are. Okay, so now we have the eyeball pretty well done. Let's uh, go ahead and Alt H to unhide uh, the rest of the turtle. And tell you what, just to get things out of the way, I'm gonna grab the camera and the light and I'm gonna move them way over to their own layer, way over here. I like to put it on the far right top corner layer right there. Just get them out of the way. So now take this eyeball and we could do the mirror thing again, but um, I'd like to keep it separated, uh, keep the both of them separated so they still, if we control comma, rotate around the object itself, it still rotates around its center. So if it was mirrored, then you know, it would rotate over around this one. So uh, there's a couple things we can do. Let's go ahead and grab the turtle here, shift S cursor to selected, and then we'll hit the period button, grab the eyeball, shift D to duplicate it, and then S X negative one, boom. There we did. Same thing as, as going to the, uh, come over here and go to object mirror same thing as X global right there it's just mirroring around the 3d cursor since I hit the period button okay so now if we pop out here maybe uh, turn the layer on that has the camera and rotate that around zoom out just a bit let's go ahead and save this while we're at it we'll go ahead and hit F12 and you'll be able to see both of the eyeballs in action there so nice kind of a nice quick easy way to get a nice everything's nice <laughs> uh, a nice iris texture right there on your eyeball without having to use any external imagery so um, so that's that okay now uh, let's jump in and start working on a texture map for the the turtle himself let's go ahead and hide the shell again and let's go ahead and hide the eyeballs just to get them out of the way and we'll start uh, working on this guy okay so we'll tab into edit mode and he already has a an image applied to the UV coordinates, but that's for the the um, the normals. So let's go ahead and X that out and add a new one. This one we're gonna also turn to 2048. And again, it doesn't really matter what, what you use the background because we're gonna start painting on him. So UV grid this time, and just say okay. Now it's just instead of the color squares is the sort of the gray and black gray and dark gray so um, if we come over here and go to texture paint mode you can see that that's applied to them and we'll expand this window and hit T to bring up our tool, br tool brushes there 
um, and we can just start painting. So we want to make him sort of a, not quite a neon green, but sort of a lime green almost, a little bit darker. Maybe not quite as bright as that. Maybe about right there, kind of a yellowish, a yellowish green. And let's come down here and turn on Project Paint. It's already turned on. And I want to turn off these guys here, Occlude, Cull, and Normal, because if I turn those off, then that means when I do a paint swipe, like so, it's going to go all the way through them. And it's not going to, you know, miss any parts at all. I need to turn this strength all the way up to one. So, uh, so just to get his whole body as this base color, I just turn that Cull, Normal, and and uh, let's see, occlude, coal, and normal. Just turn those off just so I can just run the brush across here like so. And it'll paint his whole body inside all of the little nooks and crannies of the mesh like so. And I missed a slot there on his nose. Okay. So now you can see we have our painted green map, but we don't want it just a solid green because that's not very interesting. So let's uh, add some variation there. Let's add a little bit of a yellowish tint, maybe a little brighter, a little bit less saturated, about like so. And uh, we're going to go through and kind of highlight a few areas. So let's turn the, well, before we do that, I just want to do a quick swipe like across things that are going to be uh, mirrored, essentially. So just a small swatch across his nose and set the strength down quite a bit. So just kind of maybe a little bit further up. Just kind of paint that on like so. And it, as you can see, it kind of did it across both both sides. So we'll do that maybe uh, across the cheek area here. And then maybe all around the eyebrows like so. Now let's go ahead and turn those back on. Okay. And I'll just kind of start just painting in here where I see fit. And one thing, I kind of like to make the eyelids a little bit darker than the rest. So I'm just going to come over here to the actual map and just paint directly on that. So we're going to go to, let's see, I think they changed it up. Yeah, go to paint right here in the view window. Used to be under the image, you'd go up here to texture paint, but now it's over here. So just go to paint there, and then uh, hit T. Actually, it's not T on this side, it's F, I believe. Oops. F, no? That's weird. Uh, view properties. Oh, it's the end, but why was I hitting F for? I don't know. <laughs> Going crazy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, hit uh, N to bring up your properties panel over here. And we'll come down here and uh, if we hold down control, or okay, I guess we gotta click on here. There we go. Click on here, grab the uh, the eyedropper, and we'll grab that color of green. Then we can kind of darken it up, maybe add a tiny bit more yellowish tint to it. Okay, and now I'm just gonna paint here on the eyeballs or on the eyelids here directly on the map. So let me uh, change the strength there, maybe the radius a little bigger. Let's paint like so. You can kind of see it in effect as we're doing it too. And also, while I'm doing this, I want to change the curve of the paintbrush to be more of a solid, solid edge rather than you know a nice fade out. So you turn it to this one, and it's pretty much a straight square edge. Let me undo that. Sometimes if I don't let the mouse button up quick enough, it likes to drag across things. And finally, this guy down here. Okay, so now we have the darker eyelids. And tell you what, instead of that being such a harsh transition from the separated model, let me go ahead and kind of, kind of, doctor that up over here on the on the face itself too. So let's change the radius a little bit bigger, strength down a tad, and we'll go ahead and change the paint curve back to the original. You know, nice fade outs, make it a little bit bigger. Just kind of put a nice little dot in here. Oops, a little bit too much. So, I'll tell you what, let's make our brush quite a bit bigger so we don't have to drag it around at all.
Okay, so there we go. All right, now let's uh, focus on inside the mouth. I believe that's going to be uh, this guy right here. So I'd like to give it more of a, a more pale yellow, almost going towards a pink, but not quite. So let's brighten that up a bit. Tiny bit of a greenish tint to it. Real pale yellow green. And uh, since the edges of the color are going to be joining the lips, and I can actually see some of that uh, grid through the bottom and lip there. So where is that at? All right there. So I'll tell you what, let's grab the... Okay, before we do that, I was going to grab the uh, eyedropper tool and select this color and fix that, but since I got this nice pale yellow selected already, I'd like to go ahead and and kind of paint that on here just so I can select it again later. But uh, now we'll grab this color, eyedropper tool, grab that green, and then come in here and make our brush a little smaller. And we'll fix this up right there. You can see that filled that in now. Same thing up here, I can kind of see some of that. Okay, so now we got the inside of the mouth kind of going the right color. Let's make it a little bit more. Make our radius a little bit bigger. A little bit more fall off, I think. There we go. Okay, so. So we now got the, from the green to this pale yellow, we got a, got a nice transition there. So like I said, I want to make the tongue a little bit more of a pinkish shade. So let's kind of go even further towards the pink there and kind of get it just here in the middle, right there. And then let's find the tongue. Where's that at? Right there. Let's go ahead and paint that one the same shade of pink. Let me change my fall off here so I don't accidentally overlap some of these other parts. Okay, so we got that color of tongue, but as you know, the color of your tongue is not really that pale. So let's make it a little bit more towards the red, a little more pinkish. Go ahead and change it back to that, maybe fall off a little smoother. And make sure the, the edges that are going to attach to the rest of the mouth, make sure those stay that nice pale yellowish pink. And we'll just make the tip more of the red shade. That way it's a nice transition, nice smooth transition, like so. Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and save this image, save as image before we go any further. And we'll call this one, uh, let's see, I guess let's go texture map. And we'll call this one skin. And this is going to be part four. Okay, go ahead and save. And now we have him uh, with a nice, the head's looking nice. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, add some of these same techniques to the body. Um, let's grab the the pale color that we used on the nose. Go ahead and click here and then the eyedropper. Okay, set the strength up. And then we'll just kind of come in here and just gently brush it maybe across. Actually, the backs of his arms probably need to be the darker and then the, the smoother, softer part. Go ahead and hit T to hide that toolbar. We don't need that at this juncture. So just kind of come in here and just paint the the palms and underneath, you know, the soft, the fish belly, as, <laughs> as it were, of his arms and hands. This nice pale yellow green. Okay, maybe we're not going to really see his belly, but you know, you might try to do an animation or something where he takes a shell off or something where he's coming home from school or something trying to relax kicks his shell off puts his feet up you know whatever we'll kind of use that on the bottoms of his feet as well maybe the back of his leg a little bit okay and now you can see there's uh, where this is what I was talking about before with the turning the cool and the coal and occlude and all that off. It prevents things like this, but we don't always want uh, to be able to go through the mesh. So now what we can do is I guess we'll need to turn the tools back on, and uh, instead of painting now we're going to use the the soften. 
So we'll use that and kind of come in here and soften this edge up, set the strength way up. So we'll kind of blur that together. It's not very strong. Let's try the smudge or the smear. That works a little bit better. Kind of just smear those together. I guess we could also do it over here in this window. But in any case, let's see. Oops, I think I drug across there by accident. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, the turtle himself is pretty well set. Let's go ahead and save that texture again. Save image. And then uh, we'll come in here, go ahead and go back to object mode. And let's go ahead and unhide everything else. And tell you what, let's just do a quick, well, I'd have to set the texture up. I was going to go ahead and do a quick test render, but uh, we'd have to set the texture up for the turtle body in here and everything. But uh, we'll wait, wait and do that after, after we get the shell done. So let's go ahead and hide the body and now the eyeballs. And let's go ahead and uh, create a new texture over here for the shell. So let's tab into edit mode, select everything, and it immediately pulls up the UV normals, uh, the tangent normals that we created in part three. So now I need to go ahead and delete that out, or not delete it, but just clear it out of the window here. And we're gonna say new. Same thing here, 2048 by 2048. And this time, let's just go with a solid color background. Maybe we won't give us, that'll give us a little bit less work to do when we paint. So let's give it a, this is gonna be the dark green of the shell. So uh, maybe about right there. So we'll say okay. And now we'll come over here and start going. And let's go ahead and name this real quick. Let's say texture map shell and then say part four. Okay. And then we'll come over here, texture paint. Okay. And it's already green, so we don't have to worry about turning the coal and the clue and all that off to paint it that color. So now we can just jump in and, and start painting it the colors we want. Okay, now uh, I will turn off the occlude and everything because I want to paint the the breastplate, as it were, kind of the pale yellow, about like so, about right there. Okay, make my brush quite a bit smaller, set the strength up, and we'll just it's gonna let me paint. Oh, I'm still on smear. Need to change back to brush. My mistake. There we go. get the right color again. So let me go to the smear. Select that color. Uh, 0 0.73, 0 0.74, 0 0.49. So I'll go back here. 0 0.73, roughly 0 0.74, and 0.49. And there we go. And I'd like it to be a little bit more yellowish. Well, there we go. Okay. So now, there we go. Paint that on there like so. And almost there. Set the strength all the way to one. And there we go. Okay. So now um, I'd like the the borders of the shell to be a little bit darker. So let's come in here over, come over here on the, uh, the uh, map here and we'll go to paint. And let's select the green here, and then we'll change it a little bit to be more of a, a brownish tint, a little bit darker too. And we'll come in here and let's make our brush a little bit bigger. And just start painting like so. Can't really tell where it's painting at. There it is. Okay, so I need to make sure I come all the way inside that multi-line area right there. Yep, 
Okay. And we'll come all the way up here. And probably we'll go to let's let's fade it to back to the the default color right in here. So I guess we'll uh grab the eyedropper and let's just run it along the edge here. Tell you what, let's make the fall off a little bit more. And maybe the brush a little bigger. So it's more of a nice gentle fade out right there. And now there's going to be a problem here because my brush is going to fall across both of those, but we'll come back and fix it. Okay, so we have a nice transition there now. Okay, and we'll come back in here, get the color of the the breastplate area. Make our brush smaller. Go ahead and paint that back on there. Actually, you know what? I kind of like to do the same thing on the front front part of the shell as we did on the back, kind of give it a darker border. So let's change this color to a little bit darker. Also more of a brownish tint, about like so. And we'll come in here like this. Let's paint that. Oops, a little too far down on that part right there. Okay, there we go. And same thing, we'll just go ahead and grab the green tint again and just run it over the edges so it fades into the the middle section, the shirt part of the section I guess. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's give him a look see. Yeah, it's looking okay. Now we need to, on the shirt area, make sure we make it all the same green tone right in there and okay tell you what maybe we'll uh, give it a little bit of a, a subtle uh, brightness along the middle of it so let's give it a little bit brighter maybe a tiny bit more yellowish tint about like so and we'll go into the okay those are turned off already so um, make our brush a little bit smaller and we'll just kind of change the strength as well. Just kind of come in here and just clean that up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and save this as save as image and we'll call this one let's see we had text normal uh let's see texture map I guess I named it the the other one's normal map didn't I? Uh so let's go Texture map shell part four. Hmm, I don't remember making a texture map for part three, but anyways, we'll save that. And uh, I think our textures are pretty well set. Uh, our our color textures, that is. There's one more thing I want to do before we jump into setting up the materials and cycles, which uh, we'll probably get to in part five because we're starting to run out of time here. Uh, but I'd like to give uh, a nice kind of a pebbly texture across the whole model. I know we went in with the sculpt tools and added, you know, some pebbles, scales and things like that, but I kind of like to add a little bit more subtle uh, skin texture there. So, uh, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and come out of texture paint there. Let's go ahead and unhide everything. So, I'm going to grab the turtle himself. Let's create another uh, we can just go ahead and use this material, I guess. And under here under texture, we're going to set type to clouds and under clouds we're going to come down here and go I believe it's uh, F3 Veronoi F3 hard mm, no let's see is it uh, F4 F2 yeah F2 we're going to use that and you can see it's kind of a cellular texture there no F1 there we are hard F1, Veronoi F1. So this is going to be a bump map. So let's set the uh, preview here to both so we can kind of see it in effect. 
and go ahead and collapse this. Actually, we'll leave that open so we can adjust the size and everything. Maybe set the depth up a little bit. Mapping, we're going to make sure that's set to UV. Kind of do the same kind of thing we did with the iris on the eyeball. Uh, we're going to set this up in here across the UV and then kind of bake it uh, to a texture map. Okay, so we're going to set this instead of color. We're going to go normal. You can kind of see what it's going to look like here. But let's change some of these colors. Go ahead and turn on the ramp and set that alpha black all the way up to 1. So it's a definite black rather than just a transparent. And then let's change the contrast up a bit. So these cellular areas are kind of uh, more defined. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and do a texture bake. We'll tab in here and go ahead and create a new image. And we'll call this one, uh, let's just call this one skin uh, texture map skin uh, bump. Okay, and go ahead and set that to 2048. 2048. And we'll just leave it black. And we'll go, okay. And now, since we have this on here, um, we can do a quick test render just to see how well it's mapping across there. And it looks like it's a little too big and pretty ugly, actually. <laughs> so let's change the cloud size. Let's try 0 0.05, see what that looks like. And the size of the bumps are a little bit better. Let's add it some more depth and maybe set it to 0 0.035. Make it even smaller. And then we'll change the the uh, amount of the bump to maybe 0.25. I can bring it way down. See what this looks like now. That's a little bit better. Maybe even further down. Maybe point, try 0.1 and then we'll try this. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think that's looking okay. Maybe let's decrease some of the uh, the contrast and the colors here. Let's try just point one or just one point oh, and see how that looks. Okay, yeah, I think that'll work. So we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, this cloud texture map. We're gonna bake it to an actual image, uh, so we can use it as a bump map in cycles. So we're gonna go over here to the same thing we did before, and just go ahead and bake the texture. It's going to bake it in both windows here. Actually, it's just going to be white color, so let me. This is all cleared up. Okay, never mind. Um, as you can see, it just bakes straight white, and that's because um, when you bake textures, it doesn't bake the normal as part of the texture, so we have to tell this to be uh, have a color influence as well. So now, when we bake, you can see it'll be an image. So we'll go back to here and go ahead and bake it now. And now you can see the cellular texture across everything. And the reason it's rendering it here in this viewport is not is because uh, when I hit render, the test render, it rendered just in the, the active viewport. This, you can still change this to the 3D view like this. But uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and save this image. Save as image. And uh, oops. name this uh, well, texture map skin bump. And we'll still say part four. Go ahead and save. Now we're going to do the same thing on the shell. Go ahead and grab the shell. And. Uh, give him this material. Okay, it already has it because it's kind of a universal material that both of these items originally had. So we'll do the same thing on there. Let's check our F3 here, make sure it looks good on the shell. And yeah, that'll probably be fine. We might adjust the height once we get into cycles just to make sure it's going to look nice, but let's uh, we'll go ahead and escape out. So let's go ahead and give the shell its own texture. Image new, same thing, 2048, 2048. Say OK, and tab back out, and go ahead and bake that one as well. You can see it baking over here in the window. And 
soon as it's done. Okay, now we'll go ahead and save this one. Save as image. And we'll go ahead and call, click on this one just so we can copy the, some of the name. And we'll call this one Texture Map Shell Bump Part 4. Okay. So there we go. Now we have pretty much all of our textures that we need uh, to start mapping them uh, in cycles to to where they they fit on here and we have all the we have the tangent normal maps we have the bump maps and we also have the the skin tone maps so um, that's gonna be it for part four uh, and part five like I said we'll jump into cycles and, and start uh, setting everything up so we can get some nice renders once we get the rig and everything put on here so again thanks for watching and I'll catch you in part five